Hi everybody, so let's go over this question. So this is the results of a test for herpes in Northern Ireland and um, it provides rapid results. Look at that, six minutes, okay? So what this is, is a cheap and fast test. Um, so something you would use if you wanted to quickly test um, you know a hundred thousand people all at the same time or or within within a week or something or if you wanted to um, <clears throat> just keep the cost down um, but to really tell if someone has herpes would take more time in a lab it would be more expensive um, and sometimes we just want to need a quick test all right so it's kind of like the coronavirus in <clears throat> in South Korea right now this is March 2020, where they have tested a quarter of a million people for the coronavirus, and um, it and they use these drive-through tests. So you just literally drive through in your car, you know, roll down your window, get a test for coronavirus, roll on. I mean, they're not you're not going into a lab and have have all of your you know everything analyzed, and and um, I don't know all the what goes into to uh, serious medical testing, but it's it's a lot more to it, and it's it's a lot more complicated, and takes longer, it's more expensive. So what we're talking about are cheap tests, right? This is a pocket, like a little a little quick test, all right. So they're going to be wrong, is the point sometimes. So how bad are they is what we're trying to figure out, okay? So the first thing we do is we get the totals. So this column here are all the people that have the disease. These are the sick people, okay? This column here are the people that don't have the disease. These people are healthy, got it? Healthy, sick, okay? So, out of the people that have the disease, how many people have the disease altogether, and how many healthy people do we have altogether, right? So, see if you can figure out what part A is. So, part A is, <coughs> Um, how many people are sick altogether, right? And the problem is because it's not a perfect test, not all of the sick people test positive, right? Some, most of them do, but not all, right? Um, but there are these 10 who have the disease but test negative. But if we add them up, we get 226 people who are sick, right? Okay. Um, then we go to healthy people. How many people do not have the disease? Um, so healthy people don't have the disease, right? So 40 of them tested positive, but 1,310 tested negative, right? So we have 1,350 healthy people. Most tested negative, which is good. Some tested positive, which is bad. Agreed? Right? Now come over here. How many people tested positive? 216 who have the disease and 40 who don't. So if we add them together, that's 256, right? Uh, so if you take the people that tested positive, right? Um, 216 um, were correctly tested positive because they were really sick, but 40, unfortunately, 40 of them. Uh, uh, tested positive even though they were healthy, right? Now let's take, take the people who tested negative. We got um, 10 who tested negative even though they were sick, that's bad. We got 1,310 people who tested negative while they were healthy, that's a good thing. So this is good, this is bad, right? Add them together, that's 1,320 people all together who tested negative, right? And now here we're going to put in the number of people all together. And these two numbers and these two numbers need to add to make the same thing. So if you add these together, you should get 1,576. If you add these together, you should get 6, 7, 5, 1, 1,576. So these two add and these two add to the same thing. That's the total, right? So, um... The most important word to understand is sensitivity. The most important thing a test can do is identify a sick person. Agreed? If the if a person have, has coronavirus, for example, 
We want a test to tell us that they have it. That's the most important thing. How good did this test do with sensitivity? Can you figure it out from the table? <clears throat> How good was this test at identifying sick people? Let me ask you this. How many sick people were tested overall? And with all of these things, by the way, you, 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 uh, you put over a total of something. So here we're going to put something over total sick, right? But um, so what we're going to say is tested positive over total sick. That's what we want to see. That's what sensitivity is. How many tested positive out of all of the sick people, right? How good was the test at identifying sick people? Well, there were 226 sick people altogether, right? There's 1,350 healthy, right? And out of the sick people, how many tested positive? 216. Agreed? So let's plug that in the calculator, see what we get. So that'd give us, if you want to think about it this way, 95.57 blah 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 percent. Or if we round that to the nearest whole number percent, that would be 96%, right? So that's the most important uh, indicator, probably, is sensitivity. So in other words, if 100 people, just based on, on these results here, you would expect that if 100 people who have herpes uh, took this little pocket kit test, 96 of them would test positive. Four, though, four of them would test negative. That's what we would expect, right? Out of a typical 100 uh, people, if, if the results are similar to this, right? Um, so the next thing we look at is specificity. Now, the root of this is specific. How specific is the test? Okay, in other words, how good is the test at identifying healthy people? Okay. So we want to figure out how good is identified in healthy people. We look mean to put over the total healthy, right? And if a test identifies somebody as being healthy, is it going to give a or is that a test positive or a test negative? Right, so that's a <coughs> basically the um, people that tested negative over the total healthy out of or out of the total healthy. In other words, <coughs> we're only looking at the the healthy people here, right? So we're just looking at the the healthy column. We're not interested in sick people now. We're just looking at healthy people. So the last time, when we looked at sensitivity, we were just interested in sick people. Was the test good at identifying sick, pe sick people? We found out that it identified 96% of sick people. Now we're interested in specif specificity. How good is the test at identifying that you are healthy, being specific? Um, we're looking at the healthy people. There's 1,350 of them and how many tested negative. And that's all we care about. We don't care about sick people now because we're looking at specificity. 1,350 people, how many tested negative? 1,310, right? So we got 1,310 out of 1,350. Let's put that in the calculator and see what we get. We're going to round this nearest whole number percent. And that gives us zero, so 0 0.97037 and so on. Round that to the nearest whole number percent. Okay, and your decimal point goes two spots to the right, and we would round down, so about 97%. So just based on this study, we would expect this. If 100 healthy people, 100 people are definitely healthy, they don't have herpes, if 100 healthy people took the test, 97 of them would test negative 
and three of them would test positive even though they don't have herpes, right? So three unlucky people out of this, but most 97 lucky if for the typical 100 people taking the test. That's, that's what that kind of means. Does it make sense? So let, let's, let's look at a positive predictive value Okay, so in positive predictive value, we're looking at just the test positive people. These are the only people we're interested in, just the test positive people, right? The 256 of them. Okay, so, <clears throat> so with that, we're looking at, we're just looking at the total that tested positive, right? So who tested positive? Out of those that tested positive, how good was the test? Right, that's kind of what we're saying. Like, how good was the test out of those who tested positive? Well, 256 people tested positive altogether. And if you look at that that row there, what was good and what was bad in this? Just in this row, the tested positive. Well, what's good is. 216 actually did have the disease, but there's these 40 people that tested positive that didn't have the disease. Agreed? Right? So, test positive predictive value means like um, if you tested positive, how likely is it that you have the disease, right? So, we go. Um, uh, out of the total of tested positive, we're just going to take, you know, the sick people, let's say, the 216 out of the total of tested positive, 256. And that gives us 0 0.84375. Round that to the nearest whole number percent, 84.3% if you like. Percent, but round that to the nearest whole number percent and we get, what do we get? We get 84%, right? So what that means is, <coughs> based on this study, if you tested positive, there's an 84% chance that you actually have herpes. There's a 16% chance that you don't, because look at this. 40 people who tested positive don't have the disease, right? 216 who tested positive do, do have the disease, right? Um, the problem is that if you give this herpes test, let, let's say you take, you know, a million people, right? and you give them the herpes test. Um, the problem is that, you know, you're gonna have 84,000 people thinking they have herpes, even though they don't, because the test is not perfect. Look at that. There were 40 people that didn't have the disease and they tested positive. So test is not perfect, is it, right? So. Last one is negative predictive value. So in the negative predictive value, we're just interested in those that tested negative. This row here, this row here, okay? There were 1,320 people altogether that, that tested negative, right? And that is the group we're just, we're gonna look at, the total that tested negative, which is 1,320. That's all we're interested in. We don't care about the people that tested positive, just the people that tested negative. Just gonna zoom in on these guys. And out of these guys, how good was the disease, right? So, in other words, we could we could do a little, a little reminder here. This row is where we look at positive predictive value. This row, we look at negative predictive value, right? 
this column um, this column is where we look at uh, uh, sorry sensitivity and this column is where we look at specificity right so if you want to think of it that way but if you take total people that tested negative there's 1320 of them how good was the test how good is the test let's look at it 1310 healthy people tested negative that's good but 10 sick people tested negative that's bad isn't it this is good that's bad right in this case right so we take the basically for want of a better better word the healthy people out of the total who tested negative right so that's 1310 we take this over this right plug that in the calculator and we get 0 0.992 4 and so on Uh, round that to, to the nearest whole number of percent that becomes yo 99.24 percent so it's approximately 99 percent right so negative predictive value means I tested negative now what I tested negative even 99 percent chance that you're healthy so that's good at least a hundred negative pe a hundred um, neg people that tested negative, a hundred people that tested negative. Out of those, ninety nine were healthy, but one was actually sick. So that's not good, right? So that's what happened here. Thirteen hundred twenty people tested negative, right? Thirteen hundred ten really were healthy, but ten were sick, right? So, so the negative predictive value, 99%.